Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This is Connie with Prairie Paper Crafts. Today I'm going to be sharing you, sharing with you how I assemble this Mardi Gras bear from Cadoodlebug Designs. I don't think, no, it is, it was a freebie for a short time. It is no longer available, or a freebie, but it is still available. So hopefully you guys all got it. I am going to be giving you just a couple of tips of updated inking and I'm just going to do these three pieces and I'll share with you a little bit on the others also. So I'll go through colors and everything. But let me go ahead and get started on this for inking. I'm going to start with the yellow one first. I'm using two colors. The first one is So Saffron from Stampin' Up. So just a little bit of a hint, this pad is very dry. I, I know that, but if you're not sure, uh, it's best to, as you can see, have some paper off to the side. And white works best so you can get a true color. I also, as of right now, still use sponge daubers for the fingers. I have the best control. If I'm using a little bigger piece, I may use something else. Uh, I think I've said before, every sponge has a different, it'll come out differently. The, the outcome is different what it looks like. I have a um, picket fence sponge that was gifted to me, and I will eventually get these uh, videos done for that too. I'm, I'm just way behind. I'm sorry, everybody. But that is very dense, those sponges. I'm curious to see how they work for inking edges. They might be a little bit too big for the smaller ones. I'm not sure, smaller pieces, but like the muzzle or whatever you want to say in the headpiece, some of those might work really well. I'm going to try it, uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, so saffron. I want to point out that on this bear, this yellow is not done in So Saffron. It's done in first Daffodil Delight and then Honey Mustard, all from uh, Stampin' Up, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, these little circles are done now with So Saffron and Honey Mustard on the outside. They're a little bit lighter. These got a little bit darker than I wanted. They also have glossy accents on, but I, I liked the outcome a little better with the So Saffron first. And honestly, you're not going to probably see very much until I get the honey mustard on, and then that's when you get that pop. But um, again, dry ink pad, you can see it's not real vivid, and this color isn't, but it should be much more saturated even when I go like that. So, and some of these, I have used these sponge daubers already, so it should be a lot more ink. But one thing you want to know, uh, I want to tell you is, when I first do my inside shading to, you know, the first color, the flatter you have your sponge dauber to the paper, the more ink you're going to get on the surface. hope that makes sense. You can always try this on a scratch piece of paper also. That's also a good way to test your ink colors because sometimes you'd be really surprised at the ink colors I might put, but the outcome is awesome. So I do this a lot. I, I save the pieces and try. But I'm going to go ahead and I just am inking pretty flat here. And because it's so dry, I'm going to have to back around here some and get more ink. I think I'm going to do this on this side. It's easier for me to work than going left-handed or crossing over all the time. Oh, goodness. I got an itchy eye this morning. I woke up and the sun was out almost and Sunday I slept in a while this morning, which I don't usually do uh, any day. I just get up and get going, but but it was sunny and now it's dreary and yeah, not so great. But what do you do? It's still winter. But it would just be nice to see some sunshine. 
and I hold my hand in here so if you're wondering why I'm always full of ink now you know uh, and it usually washes off fairly easy but Okay, so there's my first piece. Again, I don't know how much the ink, uh, excuse me, the camera is picking out. And it looks like it's kind of maybe a little bit messy. This ink does fade and it'll all come together. So, yes, it, it, again, it looks really kind of yeah, not so great, but. And I'm going to put these uh, ink pads away as I go because otherwise I have a mess and believe me I have enough of a mess as it is on my desk <clears throat> all right the next color I'm going to do is the outside and it's honey mustard from Stampin' Up again I've used these ink pads or uh, sponge daubers I'm not sure how much ink is left on this uh, there's a little bit so I'm just going to try starting with what I have on the ink or on the dauber first and now this one the more you go up and down but hold your paper more at like what a 90 degree I'm not good at degrees let's see 45 degree angle so more you know you've got it more perpendicular you don't have it flat on there you're gonna get just the edges more and you're gonna get that little bit more pronounced look you do not have to do this if you like to, to look this way versus having that darker go for it another thing is if you don't have all the different colors of ink I'll show you that in a moment with the muzzle I'll do it on the back piece side first and then I'll redo the front side or I might just take a scratch piece you never know On these tiny little pieces in here, I get in the best I can. There is another way to do it, but it works just fine the way it is. Now, if you're holding your paper more flat, then hold your sponge dauber at more of an angle. It works better for me to, well, I do it both ways. It's just a matter of where I'm working. Sometimes if it's the little pieces, you know, I'll hold it flatter and then hold my sponge dauber at more of an angle so I am truly just getting the sides. And some of this you're not going to see all of it. Just do the best you can. But that is with that second layer on the outside darker. So put that aside. I'm going to do this piece next. And I'm going to show you a technique. i got to find just a quick piece of similar colored paper if I can. I think I have some here. Just a quick second. I keep my scraps in these little manila folders. Works wonderful for me. I'm just going to... Oh, got things flying everywhere. Cut a piece off. Okay. So pretty much the same color and you'll see it too on there but I am using almond oh my goodness time to wake up uh, for this piece I'll do the muzzle in a moment but what I want to show you again not very much ink on there okay make sure I get plenty of ink what I do is first ink my edges and I'll just do, or I, I ink, excuse me, the inside piece here, okay? So you see, I got that. Then I come back and I make sure I get as much ink as possible, and I do my sides. Same color, okay? And I'm doing it a couple of times, so I get enough ink. You're achieving very similar results with the same color ink. It's just a matter of how much you put on the sponge dauber and how much I apply more pressure if it's the same color. Another thing that you want to be very careful of, and 
this affects how much ink you use. Let me see if I can use find a purple color here. Aha, I did. Okay. This is perfect plum. I don't have a purple piece, but I'm just going to show you on this, for example. If you have a very juicy ink pad, that's perfect plum. And I did, you know, I'm pushing a little bit harder. But what you want to do if you have a, a very juicy ink pad, put your sponge dauber in and then just start, if you've ever um, done rubber stamping and stuff, you do this, but just start getting off as much as you can. And then I'll just show you, and a, a very light touch, okay, around the edges. And there again, I want it darker. I'm gonna just do a little bit more shading here. So then I'm gonna use, I tapped a few times, I'm gonna use my full strength color on the outside. And that's the results you get, so. You can achieve it with the same color. I often use different colors. I just wanted you to know that you don't have to. If you have just a couple of colors. When I first started paper piecing, I had a corduroy, I forget the brushed corduroy maybe, from Tim Holtz, the Distress Ink. I used that and, oh here, I put my sponge dauber away for this and I'm not done with it. Um, let's start with the new one, maybe. Can you find it? Yeah. I use just, you know, either browns or blacks or grays, depending upon the color scheme I was working on. It works perfectly fine. I've seen that done, and it, it really is beautiful. Excuse my... It's very beautiful just to use, like, browns or blacks. I would still do the two-tone if, if you like that effect. Again, not everybody does, so... It's going to be a morning, I'm telling you. Everything is going... I woke up with clumsy hands and it's, everything's still just getting dropped and falling. But anyway, you don't have to have all these different colors. You can still achieve some beautiful results. I apologize if I was off camera. I'm just... Um, I've got... You can see... <clears throat> get my fingers out of the way. I would find... Uh, I've got it pretty flat to the camera, okay? So, that piece, again, was done with almond on the flat side. And I'm going to come back with crumb cake from Stampin' Up. The other one was from, almond is from ah, close to my heart. I got that through Kim Ferguson. Uh, and then this, so you can see, again, doesn't have very much ink on it. The stamp pad itself is fairly juicy and you can't see it on camera. Sometimes you can see the ink. I get carried away and it's got little tiny beads of ink on the top, but when you, what, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but when I push my sponge dauber in, I can see that it's more inky. It's, uh, it's got a little, it looks like just a little bit of sweat on the top and it's just because it's so full of ink. So. There's the two comparisons here, uh, just wet and barely any ink. So again, I'm holding them, this at about a 45 degree angle, and then my sponge dauber also, and I'm just going to do the edges. I'm not putting it flat like this. I hope this is making sense, and I know I've had a lot of people ask, well, how do you get that, you know? You ink like that, the edges, and get those, it pops out more, I guess, is what I'm looking for, the word. I'm not sure exactly what to say, but this is how I do it. So, I'm going to quick do my head. This piece, uh, I'm using soft suede. This is uh, American Crafts Creamy Caramel, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't think caramel. But anyway, um... My ink pad is very dry and I've been using this sponge dauber, but I just, I'm going to continue. And you'll see you're not getting a lot of ink, but you will see a contrast in a moment. 
And if you don't feel like you have enough color on here, come back and do it again. You know, it again, it's going to dry slightly, so... Mm. Got a little bit of a catch there. I don't like that, but I'll try and fix it in a moment here. Or not. It's going to bug me if I just don't fix it right away. And I don't know where my sandpaper is, so... The other thing I had uh, people ask me about is blades. For the I use a Cricut, if you're wondering. I just used the first Explore that came out. But I use only Cricut blades, and I use the, uh, they come in titanium, the fine cut. I don't use just a regular blade. Uh, I don't know where I came across that a long time ago, that they have fine blades, and I don't have problems at all. If my paper does start snagging from time to time, I change the blade because the fine blades, the titanium, last a long time. And then I know someone else asked me, and I'm going to try to get to my Cricut here quick and show you the housing and what you want to do there. So let's see if I can get to it. Yeah. By the way, that was uh, early espresso on the outside and soft suede on the inside. This is the housing for the Cricut for the blade. Make sure you take that blade out from time to time and that you don't have any lint or paper fuzz on the end of the blade or in the housing. And I say that only because my poor sister, she must just love me by now. She was using my expression and she couldn't get it to cut. It was just awful cut. And I had a fairly new fine blade in there. Finally I said, you know, try taking the housing out. Look at is there any flint and stuff in there, depending upon the type of paper you're cutting? Some is worse than others. Well, sure enough, it was full of paper lint. Took it out, and it cut fine. So that's the only reason I'm telling you that. But, oh, one other thing I wanted to share with you. If you cut the shadow piece or the background piece, I take, like, uh, the early espresso or the soft suede, after I'm all done inking, and then I just go around this roughly, just, and I go pretty flat with the sponge dauber up and down. I really just want to get it, the edges a little bit, so I so decided share. But I'm going to go ahead and start getting this together for you. I'm going to try to get a fresh piece of white paper and see once if we can't get this together. I realize the other one is pretty inky, so I'm trying to be careful with that because the second layer of glossy accents may still be a little wet on that bear. Also, try not to lose any parts today. This is just plain old text weight paper. You can use anything. It just, you know, whatever scraps you have. Okay, but let's get started here. I normally start with ears and arms and work up. And because I have this bear here, I don't have to have the computer in front of me, but I did with this one and uh, this guy here. So just helps me a lot. Okay. And I will try to share with you some of the paper I've used. I also had questions on that, and these are all wonderful, wonderful questions because I went through a lot of paper when I first started. I like to use a 65 pound weight paper. American Crafts and Basil are about the thickest. I've tried to use Stampin' Up. I love it for cards, but it's a little bit thick for layering for me. I like a little bit more flexibility in the paper, so. Okay, on this ear. There are two little pieces up here that just jut out and that is what I am 
attempting to match those up with. Just to give you an idea. Then there's this little round piece that's a little bit lighter that goes inside his ear. So get that on. Then I'm going to put his arms on. Now, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong. I think I put my arms on backwards, but from previous pieces, this seems to work the best. So I put the wider piece at the top and the narrower piece at the bottom, which looking at an arm probably is right, but however. Now, again, there's just this tiniest little piece on the between the where the hand will go in the head. And I want to make sure that I get my arm up high enough so it's going to get covered by the head. And again, I'm just going to paste, place this here right now, okay? Also, the other one, I'm going to kind of layer it in this little crook there, here, right here. Now, what I'm going to do, yes, I got a little carried away, my fingers, the, my fingers slipped, but this is going to get covered up so I didn't flip it over. But I'm going to put my body here. What I'm doing is making sure everything is getting covered up with the body and the head, which it does. So I know my arms are okay about where I'm putting them. And because these would get covered up if you're not real comfortable, what you can also do is just put a little dot of glue in the middle. Trying to get this curved a little bit more. But um, I'll show you here in a moment. Just put a dot right here. You don't have to cover the whole thing because it's mostly going to get covered up with other pieces which will hold it down. So you don't have to cover the whole thing there. Now I have to kind of watch again because I'm I was trying to figure out, I look at the layering and kind of like a puzzle, but a 3D puzzle, so to speak, what's going where next. In this case, I'm safe to put the body on, uh, just because, you know, basically nothing, everything else is going to build over that, even the hands this time, everything. So I'm going to go ahead and put the body down. And I've learned not to use quite so much glue. You don't need that much because other pieces hold it. Um, I don't know why I get carried away with the glue sometimes. but And I'm going to flip this over to show you. There's this little tiny piece between the feet. This little... And that's what I'm... I don't know, that little flat piece there. That's what I'm layering the bottom against. So then I kind of have a good idea that it's pretty much in place. It's a little bit crooked. It's okay. It It is going to get all covered up with the head here and the feet and everything. So it's, it's harder for me when I'm doing it on camera. I don't want my head in there. So that's why I do it a little bit different. Now, the next piece I want to put on is the hat. I think. I can't remember how I did this. It was a day or two ago and a lot going on. Um, no, I don't believe we're going to put the head on next, to be honest. You could put the hat on. I think most of it will get covered up with the rest of it, but I'm going to just do the, the head next. Again, just a light layer of glue. Maybe. decided it's a good thing I put a se one separate together because the very first time I had to take a few pieces apart, which is normal for me. But it always bothers me when I have to do that on camera. So, um, and I figured out after I put this one together, there's a little piece here that comes down. It, and I'm going to leave it, I think, 
thought it got covered up now this time because I did that other one a little bit off. No. I don't know if I have the head backwards, but there's a tiny little bit of uh, body I can see here. So, hey, I just come and cut it off on the back. I don't know if you can see this little tiny sliver. I'm thinking because I got a little bit of overhang, I might have the head backwards, but it all works for me. I just fix it. Just make sure I'm not getting the top layer in there anywhere. And it'll all work itself out. I was still trying to... I know I had to do this on the other one, and I thought I should probably check the head, but I didn't this time. I just inked it, and... It's computer. Not all shadows are perfect, you know? It's, it is what it is. So... I can do the arm a little bit. Okay. We are going to work on the face. And the eyes, first of all, because this is going to go on and we have a second layer to go over it, I want to get some chalk on here, which I don't normally do, but because you can see it's kind of going underneath that second layer, I want to get that on first. I will put some chalk on here because it's it needs to be replaced, but I use them as long as I can. For this one, I'm going to use a little bit lighter chalk, so I'm going to probably use a mixture of this and this together. And again, here you can just tap off the excess. You can add more to it. It's going in a circular motion. And yeah, I'll have to add a little more, but that's okay. It's a start. Well, let's see. Maybe not. No, that's going to be good. It doesn't look very dark, but by the time you get it all together, it'll be fine. I don't put these two pieces together yet, but I just want you to show you that I... See, it's plenty dark now, so we're good. You can even lighten it up if you want. Next, I'm going to work on the eyes. Excuse my reach here. That's the nose. Now, there's two little indentions there. I put those together. This is the part that's hard for me to do. Here's the other piece that has a little indention. So, got my two eyes. I put these. Can't see white on white. I put them up toward the top. So there's just a very thin line there around this and I'm going to put them both like they're cross-eyed. One of these days I'm just going to have it so they are looking like, you know, put one here and one here so he's looking off. But for right now, we'll just follow the pattern. So again, just putting it up toward the top. Get the black in there. glue out of the way people I'm sorry and again I put those up toward the top and it doesn't normally take quite this long to paper piece but when I'm on camera doing it it does take a little longer so let's see where'd my body go the other day I was working on a card I was uh, chatting online with someone and I was working on a card I lost the card twice once I put it in one of the folders where I keep my uh, colored cardstock. Why? I don't know, but that's where I found it. The next time, I don't remember where I found it, to be honest, but my good grief. This is another reason I'm not putting this on, because I'm going to put my eyes on first, and just for getting layering purposes, you see there's a like a smidgen of space at the top from these two pieces, the muzzle pieces, well, the nose is going to cover that up, so. Okay. 
get my eye pieces together on the right side. These two muzzle pieces are loose and I just want to kind of layer these below so I know where to place them. This is why I do not put the muzzle on yet. And I kind of try to get them centered between the two head pieces as best I can, kind of even. So I'm going to leave my muzzle down because if I don't, it'll move. And yeah, I'll have a mess. Okay. And I'm also trying to be conscious of, get that down, this little bit of the eye, how much, you know, on each side that it's fairly even or the same amount sticking out, if possible. Sometimes I tend to forget that, so all those little details make a difference in the final outcome, I think. You know, it's just depending on what, what, what you like. So, I want to cap my glue for a little bit because I'm going to work on the eyes next. I don't do well trying to uh, do that after they're put to, everything's put together. So, I'm going to bring in my black pan pastels. Find the notorious paintbrush that that was out. Get a little bit on there. Now if you see me hitting the paintbrush or the like when I was doing it with the pom-pom thing, is to get the excess chalk off. You don't have a lot with pan pastels, but and I get kind of messy with this sometimes only because you can erase it and get it exactly the way you want or as close as you want. So Okay. And I just go part way up the eye and I get, try to get lighter as I go. And again, you can erase it. Not a big deal. I recommend any kind of a white eraser though. It works best for chalk. I must have a little bit of hand pastels on my finger because I'm getting it everywhere. Coming down on the bottom of the eye, you don't have to go all the way in because the muscle will cover part of it, but just doing a little bit of a shadow around the bottom also. Not very dark. I don't know the camera's picking that little bit of light up. Sorry, I can't see the camera very well. It, and if I stand up, I'll probably fall over. I did that yesterday at work. I didn't have my canes for balance and I stood up to talk to the gal on the other side of the cubicle for me. She was, she's, uh, it was her last day yesterday and yeah, I about crashed into my computer and everything else. Okay, then we won't do that again. So this is, uh, if I'm just going to get some of this color off if you're wondering. Oh, culture this this is a Tombow Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser. Love this thing. Very tiny. It works awesome. I was gifted this. I've never seen anything like it and I love it. I will show you one other thing that I had been using and it works perfectly well. It's just a little bit larger. I just want to get some of this ink or chalk off before I forget. And again, I use this to kind of shape the chalk around the eyes. So that's why part of the reason I like it so well. Using a real light hand also as much as I can. Got a little bit on here. Okay, I also use, I find it, no, it's not the eraser. I've had this for eons because I'm a, a mechanical pencil person. It's just, uh, this is the P Pentel Rock and Write Eraser, it's called. I think they still have them. You can, you know, um, bring it down 
or just push and it goes up. But if white erasers generally are a little softer and they work much better on chalk if you're not familiar with that. So the those pink ones work, the rubber ones work. I just like the, the myself the um, the white. I'm sorry, I have got carried away a little bit into the white of the eyes, so I'm gonna get that off. Since this is not the black is not a marker, I do not recommend trying to go over it with a white gel pen to cover up any chalk. Use an eraser because you'll have a smeared mess. I'm speaking yes from experience, so I thought I would share that with you. Oh, I was worried I lost a yellow piece. Okay, now for his eyes, this time I did the eyelashes a little different and I might black pen out any fine tip or extra fine tip point pen will work. Uh, I am coming around. On this one, because the eyes are so much covered, you can do a little bit here. I do a little bit at the bottom, just to kind of highlight it. But I do the, I'll do come around here. I'm trying to be careful. I don't have a very steady hand this morning, so. And I just, you can do the whole eye, outline it. It's just that it's underneath, it won't show. Then I'm just doing a couple of eyelashes because you're not going to see. I'm just doing a few in the middle, or yeah, in the middle, on the edge. I put my angles, this eye's a little bit of an angle more this time, so you're not going to have very much if you put them. So pieces are coming into the middle instead. Closer, you might have a little more room. Uh, then I come in for detailing my eyes. This is on the blue now. I'm just doing a little bit of white. I'm just doing a little bit of a curve. And then I like to do my white first and let it dry and be careful that you don't <clears throat> yeah get your hand in there smear it everywhere like i've been known to do and let that dry now we can put uh, excuse me get a hold of it the muzzle and the well, both pieces of the muzzle i guess we'll say i use my tweezers a lot to hold things i just can get a better grip on where I'm putting things so I can, I don't know, this works for me. What I'm trying to do is, there's a little bit of a curve at the bottom, I'm trying to line that up with the curve down here on the face, best I can. I use art glitter glue for the majority of my paper piecing. It's a little bit larger piece than I use Beacon 3-in-1. Everybody has their own preference. I don't like tacky glue for this because I feel like I have sticky fingers for so long. I like it for other things, especially if I'm doing uh, things that I want to reposition, then I really like it. But I'm not, it's not my favorite for paper piecing, so... This piece, I also line up with that little bit of curve at the bottom. And I just put some, I always put my little white dots on his cheeks. I can put his nose on next. Then we'll go on to the hat. And we'll get this done eventually. I'm sorry to keep you. I put the nose up a little bit off this piece, okay? Uh, just kind of center it between the eyes. I don't know why, just what I do. I'm going to come in with my brown detailed doodlers. The other one I did, I used black for the little dots. And I got to thinking, you know, it's just too dark. So I'm just going to come in. Just 
Just do that on my beers. That's not done, but I, le I need to let the marker dry. But, again, excuse me, in the meantime, we're going to come in and get this hat on. So, yeah, it looks kind of funky. It looks like, you know, there's a little spot here. It all gets covered up, so not to worry. This piece, I need to be able to get it repositioned better. I'm going to use my uh, beacon glue. And I like to hold it up and I kind of try to take this top little thing and, and start there to kind of align it and then move it around and you can see why I like to use my beacon. I have a little bit more time. Uh, art glitter glue is awesome, but you have very, very little time to move things around. I'm going to try to show you. Uh, there is a little tiny hook here. It's supposed to be there. It'll get covered up in a moment. I'm going to take my next piece. This is, uh, I used Emerald Envy on this from Stampin' Up. Both the inside and the outside. I just tried to make the, other, the outside a little bit darker. I like, I come back and lighten this up in a moment here. For his hat, I used Perfect Plum on the inside. Very light, so I rubbed a lot of it off and then it's got a little bit of egg, elegant eggplant on the outside just kind of so you wonder okay this green piece will line up here with this little tip here and then there is a little bit of a jut here with the last yellow piece so that's where you want to line those up it may look crooked. It's okay. It's it'll all come together. Trust me. I gotta pick this up so I get this on there straight too. So again, I wanna and you have to pull it up. You wanna pull it down. It's just I don't know. It seems like it's the natural tendency. You don't wanna pull it down, but you don't want to. You wanna bring it up. That piece will just. Hook on this little piece on the side and this one, so they all fit. If you're not comfortable at first, lay it on there and kind of get an idea. And then we can put this purple piece on. Again, I'm going to try to share with you, there is, eh, it's probably not showing very well, there is a tiny bit of tan or, you know, the bare color here off of this purple. This is going to cover it up in there. That just fits in that little tiny spot. And then it comes over like this. And I have to think about this moment. Just so I want everything covered up. It'll cover everything up over here then too. So if you get it on straight. Again, I'm going to use the beacon even though it's a smaller piece. I used to use beacon for all my paper piecing. Even my little tiny, like that little green piece, um, can be done, but it's um, a challenge, so. Okay. I'm going to come in with my little uh, yellow pieces next and fill those on. get the first one because it's got that and I'll do these three and I believe they're all pretty much the same size they've worked out so I didn't have to pick and choose which one I put like on this end this and like these three so and again on these on the inside I used so saffron out the outside honey mustard all from Stampin' Up and I thought I was going to say something else. I don't remember. Now, this one, I don't know if you remember, I told you there's just this little piece jutting out. These don't, these pieces actually just go basically on the very tip of the green. They don't cover it in any way. And it will cover that little piece that juts out. 
Um, I can run that on the last one, so, or the first one I did. And now I'll come back with the measurement on this one. I come up, I don't remember what I put it at for size. I know I kind of did it more as a card size. I don't make them as large as they come in. Quick take a look here. So about one, two, three, about three and a half, three and three fourths. I think it's more like three and three fourths all total. That's what it comes up to. But let's go ahead and get his well, this Fleur de Lis on. This actually goes on top of it. And then when I cut this, I... and then all of a sudden it dawned on me when I was putting it together. Well, now doesn't that make perfect sense? So that gets layered on top, and then this little green piece gets layered on the back. And I think all three of these colors are from, you know, you get the paper packs from Michaels and you get the ombre colors in. I'm pretty sure that's where these all came from. I have so much paper in my stash, I can't be 100% sure. Apologize. So, the next thing I want to share with you on this piece, I don't know if you can tell, I'm upside down now. There's a little bit of a, I'll show maybe better here, a little bit of a piece that juts out on the foot down here. That's where this is going to rest. This one I went over a little bit too far to the left, so I'm going to try to get it a little bit. Yeah, I want to get it over here more. You want it to line up with this little piece between the hand, the paw, or the foot, this edge here. And I don't think I did that before, so just a hint on that. Before I do that, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my little dots here. I have a little bit of brown on the end of this little tiny pom-pom. And I just come in and rub it over where I put the little dots just to give a little bit more detail. I had to do that before I put this on. So again, I'm lining this all up. Because I've got some pointed edges here, it's easier for me to use the art glitter glue than beacon. And also, if you don't use quite as much art glitter glue, you have a little bit, maybe more wiggle time there. But, um, So it's not layered down, not laid down tight, so whoops, I don't want that to Yeah, I have a struggle with some of these smaller pieces to get them straight on and sometimes when you resize them, the shadows the background piece, whatever you want to call it it's just a tiny bit off and it can make, on these smaller pieces especially, it can make it, make a difference. So, this guy out of the way. Now I'm going to put the paws on because this hand, for some reason, actually, on this piece, is going to overlap. So, and again, when you start resizing, you're going to have a little bit different, maybe, layer or look than you do when you see it on the computer uh, just because of some more compact things are going to be a little bit more pushed together so to speak so that took me a while to figure out too it's it just like okay but they're not overlapping on the photo but then yeah when you have to start compacting things it started to make sense okay and if I remember the, the photo right, this part of the Fleur de Lis was over a little bit further than this one is, so I'm more comfortable with that. Now I'm going to put the toes on. The toes, there are two that are smaller for the baby toes, so to speak. 
so you might want to think about that. And probably the next two might be different size also, but you know, I just pop them on. I don't get too excited about that just because, uh, yeah, I can tell now for some reason. Maybe it's a little lighter, not much, but... I think these bears are so cute and it was such a joy to use something besides red and pink. A little bit of green but um, I'm ready for some colors other than Christmas and Valentine's Day. So this was nice. And if you're thinking I'm done I have um, some detailing to do. so with the chalk and stuff so if you want to stick around great I want to thank everybody for joining me and all of the very very kind comments I'm just blown away you guys make my day I'm reading a really awesome book um, it's called Kindness is Courageous one of my co-workers, she is just the most awesome lady. She gave it to me uh, to read and actually now has gifted it to me. She said she has so many books, but it's a hundred different stories of acts of kindness and it's just very uplifting. I just love it. And she was telling me about it and I asked her when she was reading it if I could read it when she was done and she said, sure, well, she, poor lady, she lost the book. So she had to go back and look for it a little bit, but she found it. I knew she would, and I think her house is filled with books everywhere. She said, my kids don't want them. She said, I got to start getting rid of some, and yeah. So I was the lucky recipient. I will be passing it on. At some point, I just haven't finished it. I enjoy reading it. It's just, just wonderful. I am just doing some doodling with my white gel pen, as you can obviously see. I'm done with that. I'm going to come in with my white chalk and do some work here. So, I'm using a makeup sponge brush. I'll show you with my sleeve. I just rub it off. I don't want that much uh, chalk on there. And just come in and I told you I was going to come back with the green, right? And highlight a little bit. Well, this is an awesome way to change the color of your paper if you need and to add highlights. So I like the makeup sponges because it gives me a little bit, on this little pieces, a little bit more room, or it's just easier to maneuver. If I've got a bigger piece, I use a uh, sponge, a little bit different sponge dauber. Uh, this should be dry in the eyes now. Go on his nose. The nice thing with this too is uh, if I'm using white pan pastels. Any white chalk is fine, but if you don't like it, erase it. Start over. Done that many times. This is really, I don't like this purple paper on this. I'll be honest, it's a little too dark for me, but it was the best I could come up with at the time. So I'm just kind of doing it I can to tone it down because it was just really really bright and just a little bit in his hands and then his paws 
this can really, um, if you don't do this, you don't have to. It just can really add a lot of, oops, I forgot to rub that one off. It can really add a lot of highlighting and color. You can also blend it out with your fingers, in case you wonder. Should try to do this flatter because it will start to wear at the plastic tip at the end and it won't last as long. So anyway, my final thing, I will do one layer now on camera. I do two layers. I don't know if it's gonna pick up any shine on this one, but I am going to put glossy accents on it. Let me see if this will get started. I know there's lots of different products for this, so I just have this to use up. I hope to get another video done today. I don't know if I'll get it uploaded out for a day or two, but sharing with you my Valentine's uh, popcorn baskets all the paper pieces I did, and then also have a slider treat box that I'll be sharing with you. I used the Valentine's title with the heart from Cuddly Cute Designs for that. So if you, I'll be showing you how I put that together and do the slider box for you. Anyway, there is the finished paper piece. Goodness, there is the first one I did, and this is the second one. Pretty much the same. So I do want to thank you all for joining me. Have an awesome day.